If you ain't smoking mimosa, you ain't fucking with Sosa. The man, the myth, the legend, post war himself. From SoundCloud. From post war from SoundCloud. God bless, baby. How's it going, my man? Wonderful, man. How about you? I'm good. How you been? Oh, dude, I've been wonderful. Um, yeah, the past uh, couple months or so have just been, uh, they've been filled with uh, much growth, a whole lot of development in more ways than one. Basically, within the last couple of months, I've met a whole lot of new people. Okay. And I've met a whole lot of people who, you know, despite the fact that, you know, I haven't known them for as long as I've known, like, you know, people that I've been working with for years and years and years. There's been, like, a really intense connection happening. Okay. And uh, I've been seeing, you know, my people fucking with uh, other groups, like, specifically uh, Travis T. Shout out my boy Travis T. Uh, the fact that, like, you know, everyone in Winnipeg is coming through to his studio. Yeah. And I remember uh, me and him, like, you know, fucking with each other shit back in the day. And I was really excited to stop by his studio for the first time. And then a little while after that, things just went crazy. Like it's, yeah. I, and I loved seeing it. Like he's, he's got the most crazy work ethic out of anyone that I know. He's there like every day. Serious. He? Yeah. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Sleeping there, eating there. Yeah. Singing and rapping and trapping there. It's always a good time over at Travis T Entertainment. That's facts, though. Yeah, y'all need to fu- y'all need to fucking um. If you're trying to record some shit, if you're trying to get some shit mixed or mastered, yeah. hit up Travis T Entertainment. Yeah, go there. So let's take it back, man. Where are you from? Where am I from, dude? For the longest time, I thought I was from London, Ontario, um, but I just found out recently that's not true. <laughs> How did you just recently find that out? Yeah, people. Uh, people in my family just kind of assumed that I knew. Um, I was technically born here in Winnipeg. Okay. And then, at a very very young age, me and my family moved to London, Ontario, which is where mm. we lived for most of my like early 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 childhood. And okay. like the earliest memories that I have are from like before kindergarten when like we're moving from london like back back to winnipeg yeah exactly okay so it's like i always just kind of i I always just kind of assumed that i was born in in london and they never they never like brought up it's like oh you know we were born you were born in winnipeg first right i guess it was just never something that was brought up yeah i guess if it's like you your earliest memories were being there you would just assume. Yeah, exactly. And you know, the, the, you know what they say about assuming. If you assume, you're just a bitch. <laughs> um, so where did you like? <laughs> where did you go to school here and stuff? What neighborhood did you grow up in? When we first moved here, we moved. Uh, you know where the Green Briar is? Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a uh, street or two over. Um, okay, so like. Uh, Riverbend area, kind yes, of. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that was where uh, we we were uh, we were chilling out for uh, for like my early like. How many years I, would you say? Yeah, like three, four. You know, it's okay. I. Uh, that's where I attended like a preschool and like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All that stuff, yeah. But then, um, like by the time I was uh, getting into a, uh, by the time I was going into kindergarten, we had all like moved to North Kildonan, and that's oh, where okay. that's where we lived until yeah. I moved out of my parents' crib to uh, North Side, oh, Point Douglas, Kildonan, baby. Boy. What type of uh, student would you say you were, though, kind of in school? I was majoring in film and minoring in um, in English. Uh, not no like specific like. I wasn't doing like creative writing or jur- journalism or anything like that. It was okay. just major in film, minor in English. What type of student were you like prior to that? Like in high school and mid- uh, middle school? That's a weird question. Well, ra- <laughs> it's not a weird question, but rather it's it's got a weird answer. There's cuz I, you know, I took theater throughout all of high school. Yeah. But that was just because I didn't have the discipline to learn an instrument oh so it's like hey i'll do you are a musician though like you do know how to play instruments now yeah Yeah, but i learned that shit on my own time okay (laughs) i I wasn't out here trying to learn a fucking trombone or nothing yeah 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 
I, I took theater throughout all throughout high school, and I was never in any plays. Okay. I was never in any of the, the clubs as far as, like, acting went, like, improv or anything yeah. like that. But <laughs> uh, when I was graduating high school, when I was, I was put in the yearbook twice as uh, most dramatic and most likely to be famous. When did you... Uh first get into creating music like in any sense like actually actually like recording it and like well, actually like, putting in effort. did you uh at first before you were rapping and stuff did you pick up an instrument did you oh. start writing lyrics did you start doing what <laughs> dog when your hand sanitizer prematurely ejaculates you just busted all over my couch dude i didn't bust it was my hand sanitizer dog yo that we gotta fucking get a good clip from that yeah. you, you you gotta you gotta put in some nasty ass sound Ooh. effects with that shit <laughs> um but when i first like actually started making music was in early middle school my aunt she bought me an acoustic guitar okay sick one yeah. Year. yeah and of course you know when my parents saw that you know this is before we had internet at our house yeah so the only other um option was to uh, go and pay for a bunch of lessons oh, okay and so i took guitar lessons for five six years nice where did you um, do that I did it. Uh, neither of the shops even exist anymore. It's, oh, okay. it was, it's, it's been a minute, but neither of them are around anymore. And one of them I took for a couple of years playing acoustic. And then after that, I switched over to another one where I played electric for another couple of years. It did was, you like uh, get an electric guitar after? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it, like I... Um, I, like electric was kind of my thing for the longest time. I have both at my studio now, but you yeah. know, acoustic was what I started with. But electric, I I enjoyed a lot more, and I stuck with a lot longer, like um, lessons wise, because uh, I've always found tab easier to read the notes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, my dad would always tell me if I'm trying yeah. to learn a song, search the tabs. Yeah, exactly. Like, tab is, like, so... I remember uh, going from, like, a couple years of acoustic to electric, and I was blown away. It's like, wait, I know where the exact fret is. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who were your, like, early music inspirations and stuff like that? So when you started making music, like, what were you listening to at the time? Uh, I was big into classic rock. I was like, okay. s I would, I was such like a classic rock purist. Yeah, I'm a big for... Kiss fan. I got some like Kiss memorabilia and shit down there. Official. Yeah, well, it's the pop. Did Gene go. Simmons rub his cock on it? I hope so, dude. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> um, when I was like learning acoustic and electric, I was like a big like classic rock purist. Okay. I was um. I was big into the Beatles. I still am, but yeah. like I used to swear by like their entire catalog. I don't so much anymore. Yeah. I like, but anything from like Rubber Soul onward, I still consider to be classic. Like as far as their discography. Goes. I remember uh, you were saying in the Andre uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, it's I. I still I I still yeah like I still like swear by. Everything that they put out, Rubber Soul onwards. Like, I love every one of those projects. Um, yeah. Revolver, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club, Magical Mystery, all that stuff. Yeah. I, I love all of it. And at the time, I was also big into The Who. Oh, okay. I still do fuck with The Who pretty heavy. Not as much as I used to, but Tommy is still probably one of my favorite albums. Oh, okay, Tommy's okay. also the first vinyl record I ever bought. Ooh, do you have a big vinyl collection? Yeah, uh, I mean, bigger than most people I know, but that's not like, that's not, a, I don't think that's like a measure of quality. Yeah. I have uh, I used to have a lot more, but I gave some of them away and traded some away because they were, uh, they were impulse buys. Oh, yeah. And they weren't like, they weren't like something that I wanted to actually have, 
you know, in like, the collection. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm, I was trying to uh, narrow it down. Yeah, I gave some of them to my homies. I one that I do regret giving away is uh, I gave away the whispers. The beat goes on, which is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah, that's like classic. Then the beat goes on. Yeah, that's that a classic. Shit, yeah. I gave that away to a uh, to a friend, and uh, I, I wish I hadn't because I do love that song. <laughs> when uh, when did you first discover like hip hop and stuff like that? Hip hop was uh, was something that I discovered when I was around thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, you know, going from being like a classic rock purist to uh, hip hop, it's uh, it's a weird it's a weird uh it's a weird transition because i was still trying to be like a purist about it like yeah yeah i listen to some rap but i only listen to stuff that's like really lyrical like, okay and, like, the lyrics have meaning to it yeah so i was this i was i was the kid i was the fucking the angry white kid who listened to a lot of hopson a okay, lot of eminem okay. a lot of immortal technique yeah all that shit so when did you first uh, start like creating music and stuff like that, man? About twenty thirteen. Okay. I I um I started like writing raps and freestyling over beats to songs that I really liked. I uh like I I made a song over uh, the beat for Halftime by Nas. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the first things that I ever recorded. Recorded. Another one, I, I, I recorded a song over the beat for Troy, uh, They Reminisce Over You by Pete Rock and C.L. Smooth. Uh, but, like, those were, I was, like, really into those songs at the time, and I didn't yeah. want to have to, like, search out beats that would, like, be mine. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, you know, let, let's just see what I can do over this shit. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah, what was that process like? What was it like writing your first, like, rap? It was weird. Yeah. yeah, like I think like the hardest thing to do when you're starting out is taking yourself seriously. There's this feeling of like when you're in the booth for the first couple times where it's like, you know, you're rapping on time and your flow's nice, but you don't sound confident like at yeah, all. Yeah, you're holding back. Yeah, yeah. exactly, hundred percent. Yeah. I remember my first time like trying to record it. It's a hundred percent like that. Yeah, yeah. seriously, no, uh, it's it's uh, it, it's hellish. Like you just, it's, it's it takes such a long time to like get past that uh, that barrier when it comes to like the anxiety, like the performance yeah, anxiety for of, sure. of rapping. Like even when it's just for yourself. Yeah. You know, like shit always sounds better in your head than it does like out loud, and you just have to kind of figure out how to make it sound as close to what's in your head well how how did you record them at the time what was your like setup like and everything i had a couple pieces of soundproof foam a microphone a audio interface like i think i it's the, it's the one that i still have the personio audio box one like this tiny little like neon blue and if there's one thing that i regret about the way that I started out, it was putting too much stock into the equipment and not enough stock into my actual delivery. Because okay. there's, like, I, I, I started, like, I started out thinking that because I was recording on professional, quote-unquote, level equipment, that I was professional level. And yeah. It's like, I, I wasn't working on my delivery at all. I wasn't working on my writing or my flow or my mixing. Okay. You know, it was, it, like, I, I thought that, you know, just because I was using, you know, slightly above par equipment. You could produce that exactly. quality and everything. Exactly. Well, it's, yeah, it's uh, definitely one of those things where you... You want to perform to the best of the equipment's possibility. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of had that, too, just having, like, great equipment around me growing up. Mm. So when I did want to become a musician, I was like, oh, it's it's going to be so good. Yeah. But it's like... Man. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had no fucking idea. Yeah. Um, Same, though, man. My favorite show is Rick and Morty. Is just it? in case you were wondering. Oh, damn. In case that's what you were going to ask. Yeah. I don't know if that's what you were going to ask, but... 
Whoa. I'm joking. I hate that shit. <laughs> Man, I, like, I like the show, but I hate the fans. Mm. That's the... Uh, that seems to be the uh, the consensus, yeah. yeah the, the, the people 100%. who are, like, really into it are fucking weirdos. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're walking... Uh, I can't remember who it was that said this, but they're like, if you're walking down the street and, like, you have, a pe- like, a Rick and Morty shirt on or something, and somebody comes up to you and they're like, wubba lubba dub dub and they, like, flail their arms around. Think about if you saw that happen. Like, some random person walking up to somebody, saying that, flailing their arms around. That's ridiculous. Why put yourself in that position? Why do that to you? Like yourself? the show, but keep it to yourself. <laughs> man, like the... Want sauce. Oh, man. man like the show, but keep me. it to yourself. Do you, like, sometimes, me and my friends will just, like, look at each other and be like, he turned himself into a pickle, dude. It's... It's awful. Like, it's... I feel really bad for whoever, like, wrote and directed that because I'm sure that, like, at its core, it's a really good show. Yeah. But there's, like, there's so much, like, ironic shit that's so funny to me now. I can't help it. Like, anytime someone brings up Pickle Rick, I just... I fucking... I I have a big ol' ha-ha. Man, have you ever seen Cucumber Joe? (laughs) (laughs) No. Oh, Cucumber Joe! Okay, we'll throw up the picture of Cucumber Joe <laughs> while I show him. Uh, while I show him oh, Cucumber dude, Joe. Oh, dude. Shout out Cold Ones, man. God yeah. damn. Yeah, have you seen it, though? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Dude, oh, I, I, you I, I clicked the link in the fucking buy in, in, the, in the description, yeah. but it was already sold so, out. Yeah, I wanted so to cool. cop one. Man. Cucumber that shit was genius. Joe. It was lightning in a bottle. I watched the... Anything for views uh, before they were famous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just watched it yesterday. With Michael saw... McCredden? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Would you think a significant career highlight would be Michael McCredden making a video about you? Me? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you'd dude, be like, he, he's, oh, oh no, no, like, yeah. if Michael McCrudden, like comes to me and he's like, post for himself, Cloud, known <laughs> for his big hit films, Wolf Fabric, and bag full of diamonds like i don't know dude like whatever he wants to do as far as like before crushing shows at the handsome dog <laughs> <laughs> yeah what was i doing before that michael i dare you to find out well hey i got, but, I got the, a question though actually you did play i remember you told me this in like a metal band or something didn't you before actually technically pursuing rap and stuff technically yeah so would you say that that also kind of inspired you wanting to like get good production behind your first raps because you were doing that prior to rapping? No, it's the timeline on it's kind of weird actually. So did you start rapping before that? Yeah, basically. Oh, what what okay. happened was is that I started uh, recording. Um. I started recording my raps like all over like my own beats, the stuff that I was producing in uh, Machine, okay. Okay. Machine, and I quit that for a little bit. I just wasn't feeling it. I was uh, I wasn't like in a place where I wanted to do that, or okay. or rather, I guess I I just didn't feel confident enough in doing it. So I started, uh, yeah, I started. Uh, a hardcore band called Unabated Hedonism, which was uh, me playing guitar and uh, doing the vocals, yeah. and my homie doing the drums. Okay. But so. before we ever had the chance to record anything, he quit. So I ended up oh. having to uh, do the drums myself. Okay, and you so, just layered it all yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's still out there. You can find it on SoundCloud. Uh, there's Unabated Hedonism, the Smash Moonin EP, S M A S H space M U N N E N EP, and then there's the Unabated Hedonism, Fluoxetine EP, which is like the Prozac Fluoxetine. Man, I'm gonna have to search those up. I want to hear that. They're interesting. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, that's awesome. 
No, they they're uh, they're from uh, way way back in the day. But that's uh, like I did I did I did two of those projects, and and then I did a loose a Lucy called "He's Not Dead, He's Just Hung Over." Ooh, and it it was it was the cassette rip where yeah. I like plugged it uh, into a a cassette ripper like it, like backwards. Like okay. like the like because there's uh you know like back in the day like when you went to like the source or some shit like you could find stuff that was like ripping cassettes to audio files like over USB yeah yeah so it was I just, like the converter box yeah or like, it's yeah, yeah it's like I just used it backwards and like played the the file that was on the laptop onto the cassette thing so that's it's got, pretty cool yeah so it's got a uh, it's it sounds like shit. And, uh, well, it's cassette quality. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, that no, was the then, and yeah, that was the last I did with uh, but no, unabated that's hedonism. Like, that's like nostalgia, though, like keeping it the cassette quality, like you know, mm-hmm. that, that's that's kind of art in itself. Depends how you look at it. Mm. Um. I just uh, I'm just really into uh, doing weird shit, man. That's how I keep things interesting. I get bored like hella easy. Well, define, like, weird shit. Like, what's weird? Stuff that I haven't tried before. Like, stuff that's, uh, that is, like, completely different to me. Stuff that I've never even considered doing before. Like, uh, more boof to me is weird. Because... Okay. Like, that's not something that I ever, ever have done before. Well... I I excessively use the term weird, but to me, I don't know if I would classify it as weird. I would just classify it as different. It's just a different thing than you're used to. Yeah. It turned out I great. don't I don't see weird as a bad thing. Okay. Yeah, not at all. It's just something that's completely different to me, like something that I've never like messed with before. Yeah. That's weird to me. Okay. Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Like, being weird is something that, like, separates artists from everything else, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's like, like, there's, uh, like, I don't know any artists who aren't a little weird. Well, weirdness is tied in with uniqueness. Exactly. So. So there's no reason that there is, uh, that there should be, like, a negative connotation attached to it. Yeah, that's very true. And I think there is one. And that kind of, like, can cloud judgment. Like, if somebody says, oh, listen to this artist, and they're like, oh, I heard they were weird. Mm. It's like, what, like, they can still be fucking dope. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, so how did you, like, uh, get, like, your artist name and start doing all that stuff? Like, how did you think of post-war and kind of take on that persona and everything? Um, I used to go by post-war period. Um, cause that's a stage, um, after, you know, it's, it's post-war, it's after a a war where, um, you know, multiple countries are still recovering financially and emotionally from the effects, yeah, yeah, from the effects of, of war. And, um, that's what a post-war period is. Uh, I just, I shortened it to post-war because it just sounded better post-war okay. period became kind of convoluted for people to uh, understand like what it meant so you know post-war to me sounded fine and a lot of people started just shortening it to post or posty so yeah yeah um and is that like uh like is there any more like meaning behind the choice of name at all yeah because I fuck with this pillow heavy, by the way. Dude, I sit there for so long playing with it. <laughs> it's so sick. Now, um, to me, once I started taking music seriously and realizing that it was something I was good at, that to me was the beginning of my own personal post-war period. Because okay, you and me were talking about this, um, actually, on the drive here, that... Everything up until then to me was just partying. Yeah. You know, it was just about, like, you know, it was about, funnily enough, coincidentally, it was about unabated hedonism. 
Okay. You know, because like, that's what that, you know, it's like hedonism. It's like, you know, that was me. It's like I was trying to reach unabated hedonism, like just being able to party and have a crazy time all the time. And live That's all like, I wanted. Yeah. Exactly. Like live unabated. But once music came along and kind of gave me some kind of meaning, you know, it was it like... Filled it filled that... It uh, filled the void, and yeah, it felt the like the, and... it felt like the war inside me ended. Okay. So that's why, you know, I go by post-war, you know, previously known as post-war period, technically, back in, like, fucking... Back in the day. Yeah. But that's, you know, like, this, um... This project has been to me what a post war period would be. Yeah. You know, it's it's a period of recovery. It's a period of like, you know, finally having something that you know, having a war that's been waging within you for so so long, like finally be over and you're still trying to figure out how to recover from it. Yeah, but you're still positive in the recovery, I guess, seeing towards the future. Also. Well, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's that's why. Cause, Ugly Boy and Pretty Boy, my two projects. Ugly Boy is um, it's mostly like negative. It's most. It's like a very um. You know how do I put? It? It's like a very aggressive, like hyphy kind of project. Okay. And the first half of Pretty Boy is like that. But then the interlude... It takes a turn. Yeah, and then the interlude yeah. comes through, and then that's when all the stuff that is, you know, out of my wheelhouse, as I was talking about, the stuff that's weird to me comes through, and that's... You know, it's 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 kind of meant to uh, to represent me. You know, I don't want to hang on to uh, onto the negativity that I had in my life for, yeah. like, you know the years before I started taking music seriously. And I, okay. like, that's the most cliche shit ever to say in an interview. But it's It's, true, it's like, like, man, I don't fuck with negativity, man. I, I'm just a positive <laughs> person. Like, all that stuff. Like, I, it's like, I know it's like the most cliche shit, but it, it is, it is, it is an eventual goal. Yeah. I want to, uh, I want to kind of leave behind, um, the sadness and the anger that I had in the past I want to leave it there and not bring it with me well I can definitely s say that I've seen like uh, a great progression in your like happiness oh yeah like you seem like such a more like a joyful dude now <laughs> compared to when I first met you oh yeah but I mean not saying that it was a dramatic ch drastic change or you were like a sad like whatever yeah yeah like angry person when I first met you but it always seemed like you know you were holding back something you know I don't know Not at the same time like we didn't necessarily spend enough time together to really figure it out but you're correct though I saw you often enough yeah where I, I, I felt that it didn't affect our friendship but now I no. can see yeah like you you just seem more like loose and just open and happy and it's great uh, seeing that from and using that name post war and you know living it. Yeah, like, like it's, you know it it was uh, that that was the goal when it, yeah. uh, when I chose that name. Yeah, you're totally right, man. Yeah, no, that's thank cool. you. I appreciate that, man. It's because it's been uh, you. You're correct. Uh, by the way, you know I was definitely like, you know when back in like 2018, 2017, all that like back in them days you know i was i was definitely holding back because it was yeah. something it was uh you know like we said before i wasn't i wasn't actually like confident i wasn't really like uh well, i wasn't were, really feeling myself but you weren't like how do you weird. mean like you would you would hang out with anybody and talk about making music and wanting to rap and if some if we're sitting around rapping you're rapping too uh. you know but now I feel like it's that's you off the hop. You're starting that conversation now, but mm. before you were just kind of joining in it. Yeah. If somebody else were to bring up music mm. and stuff, kind of. 
Like, uh, yeah, like, like, uh, like, now you'll walk in the room and say, I'm a fucking artist. <laughs> you know? And that's great. That's a great attribute to have. It, Especially it's, doing the things that you're doing. Yeah, no, like, it's, it's, it's interesting walking into a room and at least a couple people there, it's like, oh, that's post-war. Exactly. Man, it's, it's, you know? it's weird as hell. Uh, what would you say is, like, your biggest, uh, milestone so far as an artist where you felt like, I'm a rapper, you know, like, I'm doing this. <laughs> uh, most definitely, I mean, you look at the numbers that my songs have done, and I'm very proud of that, like, that's, that's wonderful, and it's, it's something to, uh, appreciate. So would you say it was, like, your first time doing, like, four-digit numbers, or? No, it, I, 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 I appreciate the numbers, but I wouldn't say that it would, like, that would actually be, like, my proudest milestone. It yeah. would probably be the show I did in November of 2019, Okay. Where the place was sold the fuck out, and, and people uh, were singing your shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you can see some joints on my Instagram. Um, they're singing along to uh, "Broken," a song off of my first album that's not even on streaming anymore. Yeah, and uh, I'm not okay too. That was like that was that was one hell of a show, and um, I had a, a whole bunch of my homies up on stage doing joints with me. I had Mia's way up. I had Term up, and, um, you know, Term started a mosh pit. Okay. I started a mosh pit. Damn. I didn't do anything. I just play, <laughs> I just played a song, and that song started and a mosh happened, pit. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it was, uh, like, that that, 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 that was, was definitely, to me, like, my uh, my biggest milestone, just because yeah. it, was, it was perfect front to back. I was oh, very proud awesome. of it. Um, what song would you say is your, like, favorite song of yours? That I've ever done? That you have ever made. My favorite song I've ever made hasn't come out yet. Okay. I uh, I know that that's the bitchy answer to give, but no, that's, I that's uh, but there there's some stuff that I have on my laptop back at the studio. Yeah. Uh, if that you, you if, listen to and like. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. If you want, like after this is done, come by. I'll play you some shit. Ooh. Yeah, man. I'll pack you some bong rips and shit. Ooh. Man. Um, what song? Because they're, um, like, the stuff that I got chilling on my laptop is the stuff that I'm the most proud of ever. Yeah. There's, uh, there's some stuff in there that is pushing boundaries that I never thought that I would be able to push. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, would you say it's also proving a lot about yourself, versatility-wise, lyric-wise, or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, like, the the whole versatility thing, that's what people mention a lot. Like, they say, like, you know, I'm a chameleon, yeah. or I'm, like, versatile. I just get bored. Yeah, you <laughs> like, just want to try new shit. Like, honestly, yeah. like, I, I, uh, I, I always want to, uh, I always want to try out new stuff, but when I, when I try it out, I want to make sure that I nail it. You okay. know, I want to make sure that what I'm doing is doing the genre or the subgenre justice okay no that's awesome so if you were to come out with a mexican like salsa track it's gonna be banging well i probably wouldn't do that but if you know like if, <laughs> whatever <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm down i'm down with uh i'm down with uh you know getting into uh different sub but yeah. i ain't down with cultural appropriation so oh, no no, no. I, I was just saying like just to show you how serious you are about versatility like if you were to do that it would be a banger like you want to really nail kind of what well yeah i get what, like what I, 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 I wouldn't I, I wouldn't use i probably wouldn't get into that specific subgenre, but like anything yeah, that, that i work on yeah. Example, yeah, yeah 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 for yeah, sure completely. but like anything that i um anything that i experiment with quote unquote yeah. i want to make sure that i'm I'm giving respect to and like yeah. I want to make sure that I'm putting my all into like you can't you can't put like even 92 percent oh, of yeah. yourself into a track you got to put 110 120 percent like it's it's crazy like people don't understand like how much stuff artists record that oh, never yeah. gets put out for sure ever yeah. Just because, you know, you don't feel like it's it's up to par. Like, it's not worth putting behind yeah. your name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
you just don't feel like you did this track justice. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your, uh, like, recording process like nowadays when you're, like, gonna do something? Would you find, like, a beat or, like, a vibe to kind of get into? Mm. And then you write some lyrics or are you just writing lyrics all the time or what's that oh it's like? i'm i'm always working off of a beat first okay. um i'm i'm lucky enough to uh you know have people just sending me packs and stuff all the time and, and god bless them for it Best that shit. thanks man hey. and uh you know i've got a whole lot of material to work off of yeah and uh what I'll do is I'll go and you know into my downloads or my song files folder mm -hmm. on my on my laptop and just look through stuff that I have, and whatever's hitting me real nice, like in particular, I start writing too. Yeah, like I uh, I try to uh, I try to uh, write a verse before I write a hook. Okay. I uh, you know I I know a lot of people like to do it reverse, but. You know, hooks to me are easier when I already know what I'm going to be rapping about, like, in my 16. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then I mix, and then I throw it in my mastering software, and I limit it if it needs it, and, uh, you know, whatever features I need, I get them. Would you say your uh, beat selection is, like, dependent on mood? Like, one day you'll listen to a beat and not fuck with it, but then the next day, like, if you're feeling a bit different, you'll listen to it and you will fuck with it? No, nah, I, I have... I, I think I know what my taste is. Yeah. I think I, I think I know what it is that I do and don't like. I've never, like, you know, listened to a beat, disliked it, and then went back later and liked it. Okay. Yeah. But the opposite has definitely happened, though. Yeah. Where I've listened to a beat and I was like, oh, this is so hard. And then I go back like a day or two later to listen to it. Yeah. And I, it's just not what I'm feeling right now. True. And like that's never like any amount of shade to uh, to the, the person actually producing it. Because these dudes are sending me shit that is way better than anything I could ever do. Like they're, they're yeah. insanely talented. But, you know, you'll, you'll vibe with it one night and then... 48 hours later it's like nah I don't yeah, want to work with like, this what, anymore what is this yeah no it's it's not even like a quality thing yeah it's, it's like I'm just I'm just not here for this right now yeah yeah so it's uh but yeah like the opposite has definitely happened and uh there's certain producers who I really really fuck with who I I like to uh, go to specifically yeah like my homies um you know Bleach Who Killed CJ uh Seeing Clearly Infinity Zan, Lose Sleep, like all of my dudes who, um, you know, really understand where I'm coming from when it comes to what music I want to make and yeah. everything that they, everything that they make is like, there's always something there for me. Okay, so it's easy for you to find a beat within those people when you're trying to make something. Th them and more. Like I'm always, uh, I'm always flattered when people just DM me out of nowhere, like, hey, let me send you some beats. Cause yeah. You know, that's that's it's always dope that someone's like you know taking Just time down. out of their day to uh, send you their beats yeah for sure so it's uh, I've been trying to collaborate with uh, as many different producers as possible just to uh, just as long as you fuck with the yeah what they're exactly. making you know why, make like, with like them, yeah. why not you know yeah it's, for sure like I uh, half half of my uh, album ugly boy was produced by me. Okay. And I'm I'm proud of that. I think that's dope. I think it's cool that like half of my first album that like I'm really proud of is produced by me. But there are a lot of people I know who are incredibly talented producers who make stuff that is, you know, leagues ahead of stuff that I can currently make. So would you why that, not work with them if they want to work with me? You know? Would you say that that you kind of like face? a beat upon that like if you listen to a beat and you're like oh I could make this it kind of makes it harder for you to fuck with it no definitely not like if it comes with uh if it comes with if it comes at me with a certain sound or a certain vibe that I fuck with it's I I, I fuck with it like that's, okay it's it's um like I I don't um 
I don't like judge myself as like a bad producer. It's just that I have a very specific sound that doesn't suit everybody. Okay. But like I've got people who I know who are my homies who are so insanely talented who are very very versatile. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you can find those other mm-hmm. sounds kind of through them. Exactly. Okay. Where do you look for inspiration when you're like writing lyrics and stuff like that? How do you go about writing lyrics? Nine times out of ten, it's probably personal experience. Okay. Um, there's, um, back when I was first starting out, I was really into a storytelling type songs. Okay, yeah. But in order for those to flow right, you kind of have to take a lot of creative liberties to, like, make shit, like, you know, just sound right in a song. Yeah. So I... I got tired of it after a while because it's like I'm not trying to invent shit for my music. You know, I want my music to be about me. Okay. You know, so it's uh yeah like nine times out of ten it's about me and some stuff that I've experienced or stuff that I'm thinking about at that current point in time. Yeah. Like there's um, I'll show you some stuff after this that is uh stuff that I made when I was in a very 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 bad place yeah. and uh, you will uh, you'll be quite surprised but but when you listen to it like you can re- kind of realize where you're coming from I've noticed like your songs are kind of mood dependent almost but that's a good thing oh yeah because nobody's angry all the time no one's sad all the time no one's happy all the time yeah people are complex yeah exactly and uh not to say that i'm like insanely complex i'm not i'm a i'm kind of a dumb dumb but i even me being a dumb dumb has (laughs) like has different moods has different feelings has different uh you know, I I wake up feeling slightly different every day, just yeah, like exactly. everyone else does. Yeah, for sure. You know, There's so I, uh, like I I'm not I'm not down with the whole persona type thing. Well, yeah, you know. No, you can definitely tell that like realness in your music, and that's like definitely like an amazing trait to have as an artist. Thanks, man. Like for sure. Um, What's up, man? Appreciate you. What uh, What's it like? Uh, putting out music nowadays like are you uh like hyping the fuck out of it letting everybody hear a little bit and kind of judging how the reaction is before you put something out or oh are you, yeah or are like, you just like i like this song i'm putting it out it, it oh man that's that that's a good question because everybody i've noticed everybody has like a different answer to that like i know people who put who like run everything by their team? Uh, everything that they do is dictated by what you know their homies think. Oh, for sure. Which is fine. Having a um, what's what's the term? Having a uh, what's the term? Having a uh, I don't know. Like 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 having I guess like like a like like a board of people to like run your shit by yeah. i think you know that's that that can only be a good thing i can't see how that would be a bad thing um but i personally the only thing that i do is i run it by my homies whose opinion that i really trust so i'll send it to like 10 15 dudes like i'll send them a private link yeah. i'll send it to my management team see what they think and um like if it's a music video I'll also do the same thing. Yeah, like you, these are some people that you want to take in their consideration, or yeah. you really consider like their criticism. Yeah, I, like, I trust them. Yeah, they, yeah, and you take it constructively, and you'll change if they all agree upon changing something. You'll change it. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course, because I I used to be uh, I used to be very uh, I used to very I used to be very pro like. You know, don't take apart my creative process. You don't understand. Yeah. It's meant to be that way. Yeah, it's art. But <laughs> I, you know, if if I'm trying to put stuff out that people want to listen to and that people enjoy, like why wouldn't I take these yeah. people who I trust's opinions into account? But you probably feel like it. You, if they want to change it past a point where you aren't happy with it, you'll say no. 
Well, no, yeah, of course. Because yeah. if they, uh, like, there, there is a difference between uh, criticism that is constructive and people who just don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah, exactly. And I've definitely encountered a good amount of both. Yeah. <laughs> so there is, it's hard to distinguish and it's hard to, uh, it's hard to uh, take every single opinion into account. Like, yeah. which one matters as much as Yeah, this but it's one. a great perk to know when to draw that line. Yeah, of so course. So it's a good thing that you, like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like, Pretty Boy, I am honestly surprised at the reception, if anything, because it is, if anything, it's weirder than Ugly Boy. I don't, I, I don't know if I would use weird as the term. How do you mean? It's just different, but not, and, like, still its own thing. Mm. So. Well, what, okay, like. It's progression as an artist. What's. Let me ask you a question. What is uh what is the aesthetic of Ugly Boy versus Pretty Boy? Darkness and lightness. Almost. Yeah. Kind of. Seems like it. I don't like is that necessarily what you were trying to portray? Because yeah, cuz uh Ugly Boy is all dark. Yeah. Well, I mean, all, and, and you just look at the names, Ugly Boy, Pretty Boy. Yeah. So it kind of like sets the vibe to yeah. like lean your thought that way. Yeah, cuz Pretty Boy, the whole idea is that like, you know, the first couple of tracks, bag full of dimes, no vest, all that stuff. It's like Ooh, no vest. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, you you fuck with that joint? Yeah, I've heard that one a couple times. <laughs> uh shout out Rare Ben. I love you, boo. Ooh. But uh yeah, like that like those first couple joints are uh they're me going back to my ugly boy type roots. Yeah. Um but then after that squeal in part one and two, it's uh, that's me like coming through with, you know, it's still it's still like noisy, angry type production. Mm-hmm. But it's me like a whole lot more confident and like okay with myself. Yeah, there's like different projection in it. Mm-hmm. You know, like how you're make like yeah. Projecting the song and singing and doing your thing, you mm. know? Definitely. Um, what's it like, uh, what was it like recording your first music video, man? My first music video? Your very first music video. The very first one I ever shot was uh, Never Stop with Drink Bleach. Okay, okay. Uh, which one were you talking about? Well, I, yeah, just whatever the first video was, what was that whole process like how did you feel about shooting the music video and like everything involved you know Mm. oh man i i I thought like i I was mentioning earlier that i was a film student i thought that i was good on camera i'm not as good on camera as i thought i was (laughs) you get a like especially when you're like lip syncing to your own music and you're like you feel weird as hell okay you feel like you're holding back almost like, well, oh yeah, yeah definitely because it's like do i do i speak full volume or do i just lip sync or what man? yeah because this is playing off of my bluetooth speaker yeah <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah so it's a uh, it's a bit of a weird first experience but you get used to it the more you do it like yeah. uh the more you get used to like uh, rapping along to your own music in public and whatever. Oh, for sure, yeah. You they like, they kind of go hand in hand, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. How They're, many videos have you put out now? Seven. Okay. I have put out Never Stop, Wool Fabric, I'm wrong, it's eight. Never Stop, Wool Fabric, Static, I'm Not Okay, More Boof, Perrier, and I can't remember the other two. God bless. That's not taking into account one of my ultimate favorite post-war songs. Which is? You know this. Ready. Ah, bitch, I'm ready. I'm counting ready. Back, uh, back in the, uh, the, the pink ski mask days. Man, just seeing, uh, one of my peers produce a track with that beat, and, uh, and just the way, like, the vibe of it all, I was like, 
man, this is cool. Like, like this is, that, that was, was at a time where, like, I was, I was all about, like, the bass and, and the fucking hard-hitting, like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. sound yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I was like, yo, what, what the fuck? fuck? I told you where the sample's from, right? I don't think so. It's from an Aphex Twin song. Okay, okay. Yeah. I remember you were Play saying, joint, man. Yeah, man, one day you were like, I'll send you the beat if you want. Well, no, I have the uh, the remake uh, at my place on my laptop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll show it to you because yeah. I had to. Uh, I had to um, actually like tune the drums to it because the OG version was uh, I literally like made it on Audacity. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, What year was that one released? That was like 2018. Yeah. Okay. Video. 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 Your you'll never be ready. Man, that's like. Yeah, it hurt. Chain Chain him. Him. Led Break the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's still on you it's still on YouTube. If anyone wants to look it up, Ready by Post War R E D D Y. Man, I fucked with it heavy. Are you gonna try this? What is this? Roasted cashews with toasted coconut and seas Jesus Christ. Dude, so fucking good. Probably tastes like the dick of some guys I took home from fame. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. What are some uh, local artists you like really fuck with right now? Oh, local. The ones that I've been listening to a lot of uh, Nathan's, like K Nathan mm -hmm. and with a Z at the end. Yeah. He's fantastic. Uh, Andre Jeanson, of course. My baby boy. Oh. Yeah. Uh, all of three, Pete. They're all wonderful. Um, I know that Egg isn't here and he hasn't been for a minute, but you know, Dylan, Steve, they're still amazing. Uh, Charlie Feta, legend. Um, Max Wins, of course. The whole Lost Souls crew are are insanely talented. They're so dope. Shout uh, out the boys. Seriously, uh, Travis T. That's my guy. Of course, the whole Link Up crew, King Mooks, Miyazwe. Man, I've been seeing a lot of buzz about Mooks. Oh, he's fantastic. I don't he's been, uh, he's he's had like so much shit in the vault for so long. He's just been sitting on it, and we're so excited to like see all of it coming out. Yeah, I don't think like I've heard too much of him, but I'm like excited to see kind of what's going on. Oh, because I've been for, seeing a lot you of, are in for such a treat, my I've been guy. seeing a lot of peers yeah. like taking uh, pictures and working uh, with them and doing shit, so I'm excited to see kind of what's nah, going on. You're, you're in for a treat, my guy. Most awesome. definitely. Of course, my boy Sony, uh, at Sony Darko. Uh, we just did a music video a couple days ago. All of Cookout Crew. They're fantastic. I love those dudes. Uh, but... You know, yeah, of course, there's always people that you're missing, but... Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anybody, like, in the city that you want to collaborate with that haven't, like, you haven't had the opportunity, or you've never reached out to them, never talked to them, and kind of, like, don't know how to approach it? No. Uh, yeah. Anything anything that's meant to happen will happen. You know, yeah. like, que sera, sera, what will be, will be. Okay. It's, uh... You know, what, whatever is meant to happen will most definitely happen, so yeah. I'm just letting shit pan out the way that it should. Okay. I've, uh, that's what I've been doing for the past little bit, and it seems to be working for me, so. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is there anybody that you would say you don't fuck with? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a whole ton of people I would say that I don't fuck with. Yeah. Local but local it's local. not it's not productive to mention who those people are, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's like the people that... I know I fuck with it's like they know I fuck with them and that okay. and, and we you know we fuck with each other um, anyone who I don't fuck with is you know it's not someone that like I'm going to go out of my way to say mean shit about that's yeah, that's not exactly. professional yeah. it's not professional definitely and uh, the people that I have in in uh, you know in my circle who do fuck with me I'm so blessed to have so, oh for sure you know like who am I to complain definitely there's always gonna be people that you don't fuck with in this profession but of course yeah it's the way it goes um okay sera sera are there anybody in like the mainstream artist category that you would say you don't fuck with like 
The Absolutely Takashis, not. Absolutely not. The Tory Lanes. Well, okay, yeah, obviously Takashi because he's a pedophile. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, like any like anyone who is in the mainstream is clearly doing something right. So I try not to hate on any of that. Yeah. You know, besides people like Takashi who just you know are pedophiles. Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously. The garbage of the earth. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I, uh, but but like I never uh, I never like go out of my way to you know say that I dislike, ma- like any mainstream artist because if they're mainstream they're clearly they're doing, doing something yeah. right as far as their art and their marketing and their uh, their plans go. Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have any like dream collaborations? I mean, like dream dream. Yeah. Oh man, like if uh, if I was to ever do a track with Danny Brown Ooh. or MF Doom yeah I would I'd, I I could die happy the next day man most definitely fucking Monopoly if, dude yeah Kush Coma dude I am in a Kush Coma yeah yeah he, uh, people I, I, hate on Danny Brown and they're I, wrong I see it but like they're wrong man, look past it yeah look past the voice man Any, okay anyone who's hating on Danny Brown is wrong period yeah also if I would if I ever had the chance to do a track with a uh, Lil Ugly Mane I would also be very happy yeah when did you first discover Lil Ugly Mane uh 2013 background when he first quit like retired yeah quote unquote uh, and I bought all of his stuff off of Bandcamp, and I listened to it all. And ever since then, I just kind of kept up with him. Yeah. And I, I how I, was it that you discovered him? Reddit. Oh. Okay. R sla- yeah, Reddit. R slash hip hop heads. They oh, had a uh, they had they had a month where the sidebar image where it was. The sidebar image was the uh, the cover art for Mr. Thug Isolation. Ooh. Yeah. So I I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, it looks interesting. Yeah, yeah, and so I listened to it. I think it was on Trill Funk. Oh yeah, yeah. Was it? It was it Trill Funk. It was it was one I, of those I'm like sure it was. Yeah. yeah, it was like one of those big like underground hip hop channels. Like they had the full album front to back, and so yeah. I listened to it, and you know I was just I was enamored. What was your favorite track? Oh, on there. Yeah. It's either serious shit, bitch, I'm lugubrious, or Wishmaster. Yeah, those Wish are the Master top three. So good. Oh, wow, oh, oh, oh. Um, so good. And you met him. What? You met Lil Ugly Mane. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the, he came, that when, was it a show at the Goodwill. Sorry. It was. Sorry. Yeah. No, it was. Uh, okay. It was at um. The Goodwill. I think. I can't even remember what year it was. It was. Cause I, I remember posting it on my Instagram like that way, probably like twenty seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like they. Like, um, Smart Death opened. Yeah, Smart Death uh, opened for uh, Secret Circle, yeah. and uh, for those who don't know, Secret Circle was Lil Ugly Mane, Antoine, and Wiki. Like yeah, just. Wiki. Oh man, he Ooh. was he was dope. Yeah. Uh, he he uh, he smashed the mic in. Into his forehead until he started bleeding. Man, they were like hardcore. Like, oh, they were fantastic! You know? Yeah, and uh, when I when I met them, it was uh, it was really nice. Um, you know, Ugly Mane, uh, Travis, as he goes by, was uh, he was super sweet. Yeah, super sweet. Just very, a super like oh, humble artist. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, dude. very, very, very nice. And um, he's but he's always been someone that I've respected just based off of. The type of music that he makes and what he puts out about himself on social media and stuff like clearly he's got a good head on his shoulders and even if some of the people that he fucked with you know weren't weren't such good people like he's yeah. he's made it clear that he's got he's got a, a good moral compass and he's oh definitely yeah yeah and of course he just makes some of the best music i've ever listened to how did you feel about the whole uh secret circle like breakup and everything for the better. I th- I think I mean it sucks because that every song that they put out was fantastic, but amazing tube socks. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Keep it low. Oh. Um but you know, Ugly Mane and Wiki handled it in the exact way that you should where 
once there's just overwhelming evidence that this shit is true, yeah, you gotta wash your hands of it, and you of got you, you got yeah. you got to be the bigger man and make it clear that you don't that you don't condone any of that stuff. Yeah. and they've stayed true to their word, which I you know I, I respect both of them for a lot. Yeah, of course sure. it sucks that Secret Circle isn't gonna be making any more music, but. Ugly Mane and Wiki are still amazing solo artists, and if they want to keep working with each other, they will, and they're gonna keep making amazing music. Oh yeah, them as like a duo, definitely like, mm-hmm. you know, they were insane. Yeah. Um. Oh, fuck. I got a burp. See. Who else would you say are like uh, big music inspirations? Aside, like, love we made in that kind of crew uh, that you've seen live that you really fuck with. Atmosphere, hundred percent. What's your favorite track? My favorite track by Atmosphere, you know, it's hard because I've got like a top three. Because like my top three, they kind of alternate between my favorites. It's always coming back home to you, guarantees, and. Wild Wild Horses. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, those three kind of alternate between like my absolute favorites. Um, Always Coming Back Home to You tends to uh, take the top spot more often than not. Okay. Um, but as you know, like those those that that is another one of my favorite artists that I've seen live because I've seen Atmosphere live about four times. I saw them three times when they came here, and I saw them once at Soundset. 2016. And that's in uh, Minnesota somewhere. In Minneapolis? Minneapolis, yes. Yeah, yeah you got it. Uh, what was that whole festival experience like? Oh, fantastic. Uh, fun fact, um, Miyazwe and Neil, my manager, um, Neil is Miyazwe's manager too, they were there that year as well because they came through with Alan Kingdom because he, he, uh, he was with The Standard at the time. Okay. With like uh, Corbin. Oh, and yeah. Bobby Raps and yeah. Simon, they had a they had a set there that year, and they premiered uh, all day with Kanye. Ooh, that uh, Alan Kingdom was on. Yeah, like they uh, they premiered that song during uh, during the standard set. It was uh, Neil showed me the footage. It was pretty crazy. Um, sound set was cool. Um, it was it's like a one day festival, so yeah. you're ne- you're never able to like see everything that you want to see. Yeah, because you're kind of running between yeah. the stages. And yeah, and exactly, that. and like no one's like showing up on time. But yeah, I was able to see the artists that I was really excited to see. I saw Gucci, I saw Ty Dolla Sign, okay. I saw Drum, I saw Denzel Curry. Drum must have been a good show. He he was the only one at that festival who came through with a full ass band. Yeah. For his, like, 15-minute set. Okay. I feel like he's quite the performer. He's he's a lovely fella. Yeah. Uh, Shout out the album that he did with his mom. Oh, yeah. Um, and, like... Their man, cover of Silver Bells is very nice. Broccoli is a bop. Like, I'm, oh, facts. But... Yeah. but um, <laughs> I definitely put Cha-Cha above Broccoli. Yeah, I mean, Cha Cha is like that. That's that's some shit that's gonna age a whole lot better than broccoli. Yeah, of course. Ooh. But I'm not like I I I I fuck with drum heavy. I think he's wonderful. He was um yeah. the uh, his set at Soundset really um really solidified it for me. Okay. But yeah, I've seen Atmosphere four times. The three times they've been in Winnipeg once at their own festival because Soundset is their festival. They founded it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but uh, every time they've had like a different set list and they've always played like different songs that meant a lot to me that I wanted to see live it's makes me happy Atmosphere has a uh, has, a, has a way of um, making songs that connect with you on a personal level that other artists just aren't they aren't able to do you know yeah, there's sure like, I, 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 it's hard for me to even say a top three atmosphere songs. Like, I'd have to do, like, a top ten. Yeah. Like, they, like their music means so much to me. Um, do you have any other artists that you kind of, like, hold dear to your heart like that? I'm 
Tracy Chapman. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I do fuck with Fast Car, though. Fast Car makes me cry. Um, no, it, like, <clears throat> as far as, like, artists who really, really influenced me, it would have to be, like, Atmosphere, Little Ugly Mane. Like, those two are the ones that meant the, the most to me. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Because it's, like, I've been listening to them for close to a decade. Oh, damn. You know? Yeah. You know, it's like Mr. Thug Isolation came out in 2012. Yeah. Play a Circle came out in 2011. Atmosphere's first album came out in 1998 yeah, that was, or 99. Yeah, he's like been around. It's two guys. Yeah. Well, yeah, but the main dude with the slug soul patch, he's like the man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. slug. Yeah. yeah. Slug, yeah. I would MC consider slug. Him like the front man. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because yeah. Atmosphere is just two guys. It's uh, the producer, Ant. And uh, the MC Slug. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what can we kind of like look forward to with the whole future of post war? Um, that's a damn good question and something that I don't want to think about too deeply. Yeah. Uh, I'm half joking, <laughs> <laughs> but like it's as far as like what I'm going to be up to within the next three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months. It's it's really hard to say. Like I'm I'm probably the most impulsive person I know. Okay. Like I don't think two weeks ahead, let alone two months. So I'm I'm just blessed to be where I'm at right now. Yeah. Because I've um I've been coasting the fuck through and it makes me very happy that I've been able to uh go as far as I have with doing what I love. Yeah. And within the next couple months all I can say is that you know expect more fantastic music, more fantastic music videos, more fantastic collaborations. That's pretty much it. Of course. Uh do you have any like, like, kind of knowledge you want to drop for anybody out there that's like trying to do something in the scene, trying to do something with being creative and making music and shit like that that you can just kind of that you want to leave in their heads to think mm. about? I am not someone who holds any special knowledge. I'm just someone who kept doing something for a long time until it started paying off. Okay. I've been at this for half a decade. Closer to a full decade. But I don't want to talk about how many actual years I've been recording my shit. It's been around... It's been, uh, it's been more than half a decade, but not quite a full decade. Okay. Somewhere in the middle. Exactly. So, if things don't pop off within the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, keep going. Please. Stay persistent. You owe it to yourself to stay consistent, stay persistent, and keep going with this thing that clearly you love enough to sacrifice other things for. Definitely. I, like, I... I have been doing this for way longer than anyone in my family ever thought I ever would be. And it's just now starting to do me well. And, and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. It's worth it. It's one hundred percent. It's 100% worth it. Definitely. But that's just me. <laughs> I need to ask. Do you need to? I did you the first one with Andre Jeanson. Will you freestyle on the show for me? Freestyle? There are a few other guests mm. coming up with freestyles. Mm. YK, Big Bear, a couple others. Oh, Lord of Mercy. And I want to know if you can be added to that collection. <coughs> they are all edited. There is no pressure. All right. It's just give me a, a beat, though. It's an attempt thing. Yeah, I, I'll give you the headphones. Pass me the stealth. I'll give you the headphones. Thank you. 
I get to pick the beats, and we'll see. If you don't even like it, we'll cut the whole thing. All oh, this let's do it. Even end up being in it. Mm hmm. But it's a vibe. I'm very down. Let's see it. We got post for WPG Clark podcast. Let's hear it, boy. Uh. How you feeling, post war? Yeah. WPG Clark Podcast. Yeah. 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 Fuck me, man. Black and mild, black and dies, acting like a pack of wild animals. I banish you to flip the script, I came to grip. How many bitches they fucking the boy? Bitches they be rubbing up on my droids. Skim ass cook, they came to fix little dicks, never hit no licks and shit. I'ma take whatever you can give me if it give me high. I'ma make them pussies wet, well bitch, and you can make them dry. I can make them try, make them fry, make them wanna die. I can always hold and you can catch me out there in the rock. Bits in my eyes, all you see is death and lies. Uh, alcoholic shit disturb us smooth like sweet potato pie. Bitch, I'm a young dumb cracker finna play this joint at my house and then we sex and bitch and think you missed the point. Faded off of all this shit, brain gone AWOL. Bitches suck me so damn good my dick could fucking paint a wall. Posty got the juice, got the juice, yeah he got the juice. Yeah, I refuse to do the bullshit all you tools will do for views. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh. Listen, 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 listen. Man, why do you downplay it so hard? Wolf Fabric, like, you know? I downplay Wolf Fabric because it's the first song I ever did to uh, reach quadruple digits. So it's like an ironic thing. Okay. Yeah. Did you feel like it was like so built just like on a hype? Oh, no. I I uh once I uh, once I recorded that shit and I mixed and mastered it, I knew that it was going to uh it was going to do better than a lot of the other joints that I've done. You just felt I, some, I had you done felt some way that. about it. Oh yeah, definitely cuz uh Euthoria, the producer Euthoria. Yeah. If you uh look up the, the that song on Spotify and Apple Music and all that, it's Post War and Euthoria. Oh, okay. And he uh he killed it like that beat is some insanely catchy shit okay well well uh we get these uh ending ceremony rituals going why don't mm. you uh plug yourself in and let the people know where they can find you at my name's post war you can find me at post war from soundcloud on instagram at post war from sc on twitter post war on all streaming services spotify itunes apple music title everything and that's me thank you guys so much for giving me some of your time you've been beautiful you've almost been as beautiful as donnie donnie how handsome are you jesus thank Christ. you uh, I feel like I'm a moderate six. <laughs> you and me can be a moderate 6.5 together. Ooh, with the combination. Mm. It's been a fucking fantastic episode. Great catching up with you. Great deep dive and figuring out the true post-war. What's up? What's behind the man, the myth, the legend? Mm. It's all love. It's all up from here. Bless you, baby. Bah. It's been amazing catching up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more awesome fucking content. Y'all stay safe and stay COVID free. Stay up to date with post-war. Show the love. Peace.